Father Vogel. We continue our series on St. John Baptiste de La Salle's meditations in time of retreat, especially for teachers. So we're in the 10th meditation, which is how a brother of the Christian schools ought to show zeal for his work. So we've been thinking, reflecting upon, both in the 9th and 10th meditations, upon how we are to have this kind of great energy for this vocation God has called us to. And in the first point of this 10th meditation, we thought about how in our zeal for souls of our children, we want to help them avoid what is bad. And in the second point, we're going to look at the more positive side of it, to desire that they long for what is good. So, Father LaSalle begins, You must not be satisfied with keeping the children in your care from doing evil. You must also lead them to practice well all the good of which they are capable. Take care of this then, and see to it that they always speak the truth, and that when they want to affirm something, they limit themselves to saying that it is or is not so. Help them understand that they will be believed more readily when they use few words than when they swear great oaths because people will consider that it is in a Christian spirit that they do not use more words. So, so he points out it's not good enough just to help them avoid evil, but they also have to grow in virtue, uh, good manners, and uh, doing uh, the things that a Christian ought to do. So kind of in this first one, it's all about through our speech. You know, there's a lot of Proverbs in the Old Testament about how we are to use our words because oftentimes that's what gets us in trouble. And I'm sure that, you know, that can be one of the difficulties in class. Sometimes you might have those that will speak out of turn, uh, speak too much. And so he speaks to that. He says, how do under understand that they'll be believed more readily if they use fewer words rather than talking on and on and on? Um, oftentimes the, we multiply words when we're not really telling the truth. So to speak what is true, to speak only the words that are necessary to speak, and to respect the times that we ought to be silent. He continues, help them put into practice what our Lord says when he commands us to love our enemies, to do good to those who do evil to us, who persecute us and speak unjustly against us. Help them completely avoid rendering evil for evil, injury for injury, and taking revenge. So, of course, this can be quite the path that um, children will go on. You know, something happens, somebody else does something, you know, maybe it's on the, out of recess or something like that, and they'll try to get back right away at the other person. Or, you know, you have to teach them not to be always tattling on the other person. They did this. But no, we want to teach them the virtue of forgiveness. Especially, you live in a world right now where, I mean, even adults need to really relearn this. There's so much anger and unforgiveness in our world today. We want to ensure that we, we're not passing this on to our children. Uh, we want to teach them to do this very difficult practice of loving even those who, at that moment, are our enemies. You must encourage them, in accord with the teachings of Jesus Christ, not to be satisfied with doing good actions, but also avoid doing them before others to be esteemed and honored, because those who act this way have already received their reward. So, you know, this is a tendency for when one is younger as well, that, you know, we do good when people see us, and we don't necessarily do good when people don't see us, right? That's the, the problem. It's not so much that, you know, I'm sorry that I did this thing that was wrong, that was a sin, but I'm sorry I got caught. <laughs> um, so we want to teach them that to do good, we do it because this is what God desires of us, not because we're looking to get praise or we're looking to others to see, just look how awesome I am because I did this good thing. We want to do it because God has asked us to do it. It is important that you teach them to pray to God as our Lord taught those who followed him and to pray with much piety and in secret, that is, with much recollection, getting rid of all thoughts that could distract their mind during the time of prayer so that they will be occupied solely with God and easily obtain what they ask of him. Now, we might think that like, well, it's really hard to get 
children to pray because they get distracted by so many things. I mean, any family that's like, well, we're going to pray the family rosary. Sometimes it's really difficult to get some of the kids to sit still <laughs> or at mass. You know, they can be quite uh, difficult. But this is something that we have to learn to do. And children can be taught just like they can be taught anything. They can learn silence. And I mean, the beautiful thing is, is that when they're taught how to do this, they oftentimes are much more receptive to being able to hear and listen to the Lord. Thus, there's been many saints who have experienced great, deep relationship with, with God, even at a very young age. And so this is very much possible for our children as well. Since the majority of your disciples are born poor, you must encourage them to despise riches and to love poverty. Because our Lord was born poor and loved the poor, with whom he was also glad to be present, and even said that the poor are blessed because the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. So remember, you know, the Christian schools that LaSalle founded with his brothers are specifically for those who are poor. And so he speaks to help them, you know, don't be jealous or be covetous of what you see others higher in society have. Uh, we definitely live in a society today where there is a lot of that kind of covetousness covetousness, right, where those will, many people will see themselves as victims and maybe being victimized by those who have, and they don't have anything because those others have stolen it from them, when it may not really have anything to do with that at all. So it's really important that we instill, that we work against the world, the world that says that possessions and riches are going to make you happy. Uh, we want to help them, you know, to be satisfied with a kind of simplicity of life. That you don't have to have the next new toy or the next neat uh, piece of technology. Uh, to be satisfied with the things that we have without always having to have more. They'll be much happier uh, in this life and of course preparing them for the next. So he concludes, these are the kinds of maxims and practices you must continually inspire in your disciples if you have any zeal for their salvation. So all these things we've been talking about, if we have a zeal and energy, these are the kinds of things we want our children to grow into so that they can really experience God here as well as for eternity. This will be the way you will show yourself zealous for the glory of God. Since these maxims can come only from God, being contrary to human inclination, it is a mark of zeal for the honor and glory of God to inspire children to put them into practice. So we ourselves, of course, need to be convinced and ourselves desiring to put these into practice so that we can be authentic and truly with that energy of wanting them to also grow um, and really experience happiness in this life and the next. God bless.